Is heel striking really that bad? Do you need to switch to a midfoot landing? Do you really need to care? These are the questions we will try to answer in this video. Running is a pounding sport, as opposed to cycling or swimming, the way your foot is landing at each step would have an impact on what we call in physics impact force that is applied to you by the surface of the earth. We often hear from non-runners, running is really bad for your knee. Your non-runner friend is actually not completely right or wrong. Actually, it's not the running itself that kills your knee. It's what physicists and nerds like me call the M delta V over delta T. Doesn't have the same ring to it, but... This equation describes how quickly something's momentum changes. Momentum is mass times velocity. So right before impact, that is the landing, the more your momentum is about to change going from some velocity to zero or the more quickly all that momentum comes to a complete stop, the more force your body is going to take. You cannot change Earth's gravity, you can change your mass by dieting, but that's not to this topic. So the only thing you can do to reduce the forces on you when landing is to extend the amount of time it takes for your momentum to come to a complete or partial stop. In the case of running, we don't come to a complete stop, of course, but it corresponds to the moment when our center of mass reaches its lowest point. And that is precisely the function of a cushion shoe. It extends the amount of time for your foot to come to a complete stop, and this time extension will allow your foot to roll so that when your center of mass reaches its lowest point, the entire surface of the foot is making ground contact. The average ground contact time for a typical runner is about 300 milliseconds. So from the moment any part of your foot touches the ground to the moment your foot starts to take off, this phase is called the loading phase. And the curve looks like this. The key here lies on this loading phase. The steeper it is, the worse it is for your knees because the steeper it is, the faster the fall of your center of mass will reach the bottom. That's why when you try to run barefoot, you naturally and instinctively land on your forefoot. You are using your ankles as a natural shock absorber and you are spreading the impact over the entire surface of your foot. So, all right, that's great. We can all buy nice cushion shoes and stuff. Life is like a Korean drama. There are always twists and turns. The twist is the loading phase is not always like this. It often look more like this. What's happening here is that there seems to be a preloading phase that happens before your center of mass reaches the bottom. Numerous research have concluded that there was a correlation or link between heel strikers and this curve. So they concluded that heel striking would have you take a good portion of the impact force before your entire foot has time to come in contact with the ground. I know what you're thinking like, oh my god, oh no, I'm a heel striker, I'm screwed. There is a twist. You can be a midfoot striker and follow this curve, or you can be a heel striker and follow this curve. So yes, yeah, you can be a heel striker and be totally okay, or you can be a midfoot forefoot striker and not being okay. If you're a heel striker and someone tells you that just based on your foot strike, you are inefficient, tell them that they are wrong. Matt Kefleski, is a heel striker and is probably more efficient than 99.9% .9 of the people watching this video or the people you know. So now you must be confused. What's all that hype about running, forefoot, midfoot, new shoes, barefoot running, this and that, blah, 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 cadence, all that jazz. Can I just run the way I want? Not exactly. To get to this smooth landing here, the key is to land as close as possible below your center of mass. Landing too far ahead of your center of mass is called overstriding, which causes a breaking force at each stride and creates that steep loading rate that will eventually kill your knee. So being a heel striker is easier by nature of the movement to overstride 
than being a forefoot or mid pull striker. Switching to a contact style that moves the foot closer to the body's center of mass usually means that we land closer to the front of the foot. But not always. Unless you are accelerating, you cannot land right spot under your center of mass. You will necessarily land a little bit before slash ahead your center of mass. What's important though is the loading peak. It is at this precise moment that your entire foot should be under your center of mass. If not, you are in the case of overstreading and you are preloading prematurely. Because remember, it's not really how much force you are loading the height of the peak, but rather the rate of the peak or how quickly you get to that peak. So to summarize, running forefoot or midfoot does not guarantee to save your knee, nor is it necessarily superior. It's just that it will be easier to land closer to your center of mass. But that can be achieved while heel striking as well. And this is why we often hear that a high cadence is important. There is nothing magical about running at 180 steps per minute. It only helps prevent overstriding but does not guarantee anything. What can you do to avoid overstriding? Yes, changing your landing style could help. For example, uh, midfoot striking. Increasing your cadence is another one. So for example, if you are running at 160 steps per minute vicinity, you are probably overstriding. Watching your knee extension is the thing I did in my case to correct my running form. And leaning slightly forward from the ankles, not from the hips, is also another way. That way, your center of mass is shifted slightly forward. When you run, you should try to limit your knee extension. Ideally, try not to pass the perpendicular to the ground. It's okay to go beyond that, but you want to stay as close as possible. Ask someone to take a slow motion video of you from the side and watch carefully your knee extension. The thing to keep in mind is, Whenever you try to change a habit, something you have been doing for years, rewiring our brain takes time and effort. So during the first few days or even weeks, you're trying to correct your form. If at any point during the run it feels natural, then you're probably doing it wrong because it must feel unnatural at first. Imagine you try to learn how to write with your left hand while being right-handed. That's the same story right there. Unfortunately, unless you go to a lab and have someone put sensors under your feet to estimate the impact force, there's no straightforward way to know, even with a video. It helps, but you can't be 100% sure. However, there are some cues to help you estimate your chances of overstriding. Take a look at these uh, two tables. Note that each table is not exclusive of each other. One cue of one table that applies to you only increases your probability to belong to that category. As we saw, being a heel striker does not mean that you are overstriding, it just raises the probability that you are. That being said, if all of the cues of the second table applies to you, yeah, I would start to worry a little bit, just a little bit. Let's see some concrete examples of real people running. Those people you will see are my friends from my running club. Before we dive into it, let me just tell you that the purpose is not to tell you who has a good or bad form or whatever. Please don't take it personally, okay? This is just to illustrate the fact that foot strike itself cannot be used to tell if a running form is good or bad. Although I try to be as objective as possible, there is inevitably a subjective component to it. So just treat it as a fun footage. I'm going to rank the runners you're going to see from the one who seemed to land the furthest away from their center of mass to the one landing the closest.
Before wrapping this up, I'd just like to add a comment about AG's running form. AG has not always been running like that, but before I started coaching him back in the summer of 2018, his running form was more like that. Eh, pretty bad, bad forefoot landing, breaking at each step and leaning backwards, so he was not able to run over 50 km per week on a constant basis, suffering from uh, shin splints and all the stuff like that. So we worked together, we worked on his learning form and he worked on it very diligently. Eventually after 3 or 4 months, he was able to run over 60-70 km per week without complaining of shin splints whatsoever. So my point is that if you want to change your running form, it is totally possible, but, 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 you must keep in mind that it won't happen overnight. It will take time and effort. Last but not least, by now you should be able to tell anyone who give you the You know that running is bad for your knee? Pitch? No, it's not running that is bad. It's the M delta V over delta T that is bad. And they say something like, Oh, you're such a nerd. Tell them, nerd? Uh, I prefer the term intellectual badass. Da, da, ba, da, da, ba. Uh, um, running is bad for your knee, pitch. Uh, do the running is bad for your knee, pitch.